Hello friends. Today we shall learn about Renaissance in France. This is the module 12 of the paper 2. By the end of this module you would have a quint about Renaissance in France. Understand the architectural changes in Renaissance France. The components of this module are as follows. Introduction Political Scenario and Francis I. Artist Jean Coet circa 1485 to circa 1540. The Sato the Ambas. The Sato the Blas. The Sato the Senance. Women Petros at Senance. The Sato of Fountain Bla, the Louvre, Gardens, List of Artists, Introduction, French Renaissance, unlike Italian Renaissance, happened in 16th century, the last decade of the 15th century. Charles VIII returned 1496 from his conquest of Naples, accompanied by several Italian artists. This was the first time that Italian Renaissance styles appeared. The Sato of the Lair, Valley were first example and became pre predominant during the reign of Francis I. It is said that initially Italian decorative elements were simply superimposed on Gothic principles of which are examples of Chateau the Amba, where Leonardo da Vinci spent his last years. The Chateau the Cambord, 1519 to 1536, a, a more elaborate marriage of Gothic structure and the Italianate ornament. This style grew in the work of Italian architects such as Sebastiano Seraglio, who was engaged after 1540 in much of the work at Sato de Fontainebleau. By the mid 16th century, a number of highly talented French masters made their appearance, reasserted a classical style based on measure and proportion. The painter Francois Cloet developed a highly polished and sensuous style of the court portraiture. And during the last decades of the century, German Pilen produced sculptures that represent the highest achievement of the French Renaissance. Notable developments during the French Renaissance include the spread of humanism, early explorations of the new world, a new France by Giovanni the Verrazzano and Jacques Cartier, the development of new techniques and artistic forms in the fields of printing, architecture, painting, sculpture, music, the sciences and literature, and the elaboration of new codes of sociability, etiquettes, and discourse. Political Scenario and Francis I. In the beginning of the 15th century, Armeniacs and Burgundians, two powerful political factions, war for control of France. During the reign of King Charles V, 1380 and 1422, they fought against the French on the side of England in the Hundred Years' War. But the King Charles VII of France throws away the English forces by 1453. The final war in 1559 
allows for peace and francis 1515 and 1547 paves the way for renaissance in france francis i also called original renaissance monarch actively encouraged humanistic learning he established paris as his capital, making it a cultural, political and economic hub of France. At the same time, reformation takes roots in France under the followers of John Calvin and civil war emerges in France. But Renaissance gained momentum in France. Italian Renaissance arrived from Burgundy courts with its Flemish influences. Among the artists who came to France at his invitation were Leonardo da Vinci and Andrea del Sarto. Francis also collected paintings by great Italian masters, such as Titian, Raphael, and Michelangelo. The French Renaissance was at its apex during the rule of Francis I and his son Henry II, Francis I, ruled from 1515 to 1547. And Henry II ruled from 1547 to 1559. Not only did Francis support a number of major writers of the period, he was a poet himself, if not one of particular quality. Francis worked hard at improving the Royal Library. He appointed the great French humanist Guillaume Boudet as chief librarian and began to expand the collection. Francis employed agents in Italy looking for rare books and manuscripts. Francis employed agents in Italy looking for rare books and manuscripts such as he had agents looking for artworks. During his reign, the size of the library greatly increased. Not only did Francis expand the library, but according to Nacht, there is much evidence that he read the books he bought for it, a much rarer event in the royal annals. Francis actively encouraged the building and promotion of new structures. He continued the work of his predecessors on the Chateau de Amboise and also started renovation on Chateau de Blois. Early in his reign, he began construction of magnificent Chateau de Chambord, inspired by the styles of Italian Renaissance and perhaps even designed by Leonardo da Vinci. Francis rebuilt the Sato de Louvre, transforming it from a medieval fortress into a building of Renaissance splendor. Transforming it from a medieval fortress into a building of Renaissance splendor. He financed the building of a new city hall for Paris in order to have control over the building's design. He constructed the Sato de Madrid in Boas the Blonde and built the Chateau de Saint Germain and Le, The largest of Francis building projects was the reconstruction of was the reconstruction and expansion of the Royal Chateau de Fontainebleau, which quickly became his favorite place for residence, as well as the residence of his official mistress. Any Duchess of Attempts. Each of Francis' project was luxuriously decorated, both inside and out. Fontainebleau, for instance, had a gushing fountain in its courtyard where quantities of wine were mixed with the water. Artists. Francis persuaded Andrea del Sarto to make Paris his home in his latter years. 
famous artist Jean Cloet and his son Francois Cloet, and Italian artist Goldsmith Benvenuto Cellini, Rosso Fiorentino, Francisco Prometico, and Nicole del Avate of the first school of Fontainebleau were also prominent artists. Leonardo da Vinci painted very little in France. He brought with him his famous works, Mona Lisa, Sainte Anne, and Saint Jean Baptiste. And they have remained in France after his death, in the Louvre today. Francis also commissioned a number of agents in Italy to procure notable works of art, ship them to France. There are a number of French artists to incredible talent in this period, including the painter Jean Fouquet of Tours, who achieved amazingly realistic portraits and remarkable illuminated manuscripts, and the sculptor Jean Guzan and German Pilon. Other names are Jock Android du Serres, Philibert Delorme, Giacomo Venola, and Pierre Lescott, Jean Cloet. He was a favorite at the royal court because of his portrait skills. He painted a portrait of Francis I in around 1527 and modulated his features with soft shadings. Not the nervous activity of his hands, but he was also the symbol of power, shown through elaborate, puffy sleeves which dominate the large part of the portrait. Look at the detail of the material, silk, satin, velvet, gold embroidery. The Sato da Ambas, the open air country house, the Italian villa has appeared with its towers, formerly outstanding projections of the building, now incorporated into the facade. Its ground plan is formal. Most of the parts are grouped around a single court and the main entrance facade is generally made with pillared hole, as open and inviting as possible. These were the characteristics of a typical chateau in France. The earliest Renaissance architecture in France is said to be parts of the Loire Valley Chateau de Ambois, which King Charles VIII began to rebuild in the Italian manner from 1495. The employing for this purpose, the Italian architect Domenico da Cartona, Chateau de Ambois was built on a spur above the river Loire. The strategic qualities of the site were recognized before the medieval construction of the castle. Seized in 1434 by Charles VII of France, the Sato became a favorite French king from Louis IX to Francis I. Charles VIII decided to rebuild it extensively. Beginning in 1492, at first in the French led Gothic flamboyant style, and then after 1495, employing two Italian mason builders, Domenico da Cartona and Fra Giocondo, who provided at Amboise some of the first Renaissance decorative motifs seen in French architecture. The names of three French builders are preserved in the documents. Colin Bayard, Guillaume Senault, and Louis Armand Giard. It 
therefore became the first Italianate palace in France. In fact, Francis I was raised in his chateau. Leonardo da Vinci lived in here from 1415 onwards. Henry II and his wife, Catherine de Medici, raised their children in Chateau Amboise, along with Mary Stuart, the child queen of Scotland, who had been promised in marriage to the future French Francis II. Chateau de Blois. Chateau was the residence of various French kings and had several buildings from 13th to 17th centuries when Francis I came to power at the insistence of his wife Queen Claude. The chateau was renovated. Francis initiated the construction of a new wing and created one of the period's most important libraries in the castle. But after the death of his wife in 1524, he spent very little time at Plas and the massive library was moved to the Royal Chateau de Fontainebleau where he was used to form the Royal Library that forms the core now of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Chateau de Senancy. The chateau were the royal palaces of the French kings, initially built in the Gothic styles. Italian decorations began to be used. French architects soon adapted classical principles of building design as well. In 1512, Thomas Bohier, a royal tax collector, bought the castle of the Senancy on the river Shea, a tributary of the lawyer. Using the piers of water mill on the river bank as part of the foundations, he and his wife erected a new Renaissance home. The plan reflects classical principles of geometric regularity and symmetry as rectangular building with rooms arranged on each side of the wide central hall. Only the library and the chapel, which are corbelled out over the water, break the line of the walls. In upper story, the builders use traditional features of the medieval castles, battlements, corner turrets, steep roofs and dormer windows. The owners died soon after the chateau was finished in 1521 and their son gave it to Francis I, who turned it into a hunting lodge. Later, Roman trained French Renaissance architect Philibert D.L. Orme designed a gallery on a bridge across the river for Catherine de Medici completed about 1581 and incorporating contemporary Italianate window treatments, wall molding and cornics that harmonized almost perfectly with the forms of original turreted building. Woman patronage at Senanso. Women played an important role in the patronage of arts during the Renaissance. Nowhere is their influence stronger than in the chateau of the lower river valley. Catherine Briconet and her husband. Thomas Bohier built and took care of chateau of Sananso when Henry died in a tournament. His queen Catherine de Medici appropriated the chateau for herself. Catherine, like so many in her family, a great patron of arts, 
added the two story gallery to the bridge at Sananso as well as outbuilding and additional formal gardens when Catherine's third son became king as Henry III in 1574 she gave the chateau to his wife Louise of Lauren who lived in mourning at the chateau Sananza who lived in mourning at Sananza after Henry III was assassinated in 1589 she wore only white and covered the walls windows the furniture in her room with black velvet and damask in the 18th and 19th century the ladies continued to determine the fate of Sananza during the French revolution the honor Madame Dupin was so beloved by the villagers that they protected her and saved her home then in 1864 Madame Pelouz bought Sananza and restored it by removing Catherine the Medici's Italian improvements. The Chateau de Fontainebleau, the reconstruction of the chateau was greatest and biggest projects of Francis I. It was the residence of French monarchs from Louis VII through Napoleon III. the architect gilis labreto was invited to build the palace he preserved the old medieval donjon where the king's apartments were located but incorporated it into a new renaissance style cour ovale or oval courtyard built on the foundations of the old castle it included monumental porte dorée as its southern entrance as well as as a monumental renaissance staircase the porte key the seraglio to give access to royal apartments on the north side this established an italianate tradition of mannerism in painting an interior design that spread to other centers in France and into the Netherlands the architect Sebastiano Serraglio from Italy and the Florentine mannerist painter Giovanni Battista de Jacopo known as Rosso Fiorentino were invited to decorate the new gallery between 1533 and 1539 Fiorentino painted murals glorifying the king framed in stucco ornament in high relief and lambris sculpted by the furniture maker Francisco Sibic the Carpi after he died Primatecho from Polonia known as Primatech joined later in decoration of the palace this style of decoration became known at the first school of Fontainebleau this was the first decorated gallery built in France broadly speaking at the Fontainebleau the renaissance was introduced to France he also commissioned and imported a large number of copies and cast of original roman sculpture these works provided an invaluable visual resource of figures and techniques for the northern european artists
The modernization of the Louvre began in 1546 when the west wing of the square court was replaced by architect Pierre Lescott, working with sculptor Jean Goujon. The building incorporated Renaissance ideals of balance and regularity with classical architectural details and rich sculptural decoration. Gardens. In Italy, Alberti had employed the geometric principle of Vitruvius to build gardens. According to him, the house should overlook the garden and that each garden should have a portico for shade. Creepers that grew over marble columns and vases and statues that complement the garden architecture. At the Chateau de Blau, gardens were built, three terraces of different levels bordered by the old walls. At Chateau de Amvas, Galien and Bari, gardens were also built on various terraces and had various potters of flowers along with the fruits and vegetable trees. The potters centered on fountain are more normal and have water features, often based on Italian models. These gardens were palaces for relaxation, for music and dance, for poetry and learning, for horticulture as symbolic spaces for myth and allegory, and finally as decorative motifs. French gardens have the following characteristics. The focus of garden tends to be the house, usually a palace or chateau, and paths radiate out of this creating long axial views. A geometric plan is used and symmetry is very important. A central axis leads away from the house, perpendicular to the house. Paths tend to be gravel and aged with clipped hedges and topiary laid out in symmetrical patterns. Water is often a key feature of French garden design and lots of round pools, long rectangles of water will be incorporated. The reflection of water adding to symmetry and tranquility of the scene. Fountains and cascades are also very common features. Close to the house, planting is kept low, no trees, and tends to consist of putteries. Putteries close to the house can be quite intricately patterned and will tend to become more simple further from the house. Further from the house paths are often aged with trees. These are almost always manipulated in some way. Trees are always planted in straight lines, adding perspective, reinforcing the symmetry of the garden. Statuary is often used in French garden design. Pavilions and folies are often incorporated too. In the great French formal gardens, there is almost always a terrace from where the garden and its symmetry can be seen from above. I have you with a list of French Renaissance artists. Feel free to have a look at their works on your own.